Kit Bream has become a much sought after catch for the rod and line angler, and for very good reason. They are a tremendous fighting fish, fantastic looking and great eating. Until I caught my first gilt head bream, I thought pound for pound mullet and mackerel were the hardest fighting fish I'd caught. But now gilt head bream is for me top of the list. Reports suggest they first started appearing in the UK in the early 1980s as occasional migrants but have now established themselves mainly in the West Country estuaries. Predominantly a Mediterranean and eastern coastal regions of the North Atlantic fish, they are considered the finest eating of all bream species and I would not argue with that. They are known as Dorada in Spain, Dorad in France and Orada in Italy. Not sure about those pronunciations but uh, apologies if they're incorrect. Those of you that have eaten bream in a, in a Mediterranean restaurant will probably have eaten gilt head bream. The name gilt comes from the gold patches they have on the head region and they are a stunning looking fish. Book a good sized gilt head bream and you will know about it, but even the smaller fish give a great fight. At the time of making this video the UK record is over £10. However, they can grow much bigger, and I reckon a £10 plus fish would be one hell of a handful from a kayak. They mainly feed on shellfish, however, are caught on a variety of baits such as lugworm, ragworm, peeler crab, mussel, and razor clam. The season down here in Cornwall usually runs from April to mid October. However, I like to target them in June, July and August. This video is about fishing for gilt head bream in Cornwall. And for those of you that have never fished or caught gilt head bream before, hopefully there will be a few tips and pointers because I can promise you that once you catch your first gilt, you will be hooked. Just going to look at the tackle I use for my gilt head bream fishing. I see out on the internet the subject of tackle for gilt head bream comes up quite often. Sort of what reel, what rod, what line, and in particular what terminal tackle. So this is the tackle I use, and what I've got, I've got a 8 foot 15 to 50 gram spinning rod. And I use this rod, this is a multi-purpose rod, not just for gilt head bream fishing, I use it for shore bass fishing from the plugs. Um, spinning from the rocks, uh, lure fishing from the kayak uh, for bass and, and light jigging. So it's a multi-purpose rod so rather than just one particular rod for gilt head bream fishing um, I just use the rod that I tend to use for my bass fishing. This is 15 to 50 gram you can of course go lighter um, but that's the rod that I use. The reel once again it's a multi-purpose reel uh, not just for gilt head bream fishing for other types of kayak fishing and shore fishing and that's a 4000 size spinning reel and it's loaded with 20 pound braid and uh, once again you can go you can go lighter if you want to for gilt head bream fishing but that's what I use 4000 size spinning reel with 20 pound braid attached to the braid I've got a nylon leader it's a 15 pound nylon leader and it's twice the length of the rod now I find that very very important when using braid for gilt head bream fishing and the reason for that is they're such a hard fighting fish and with braid having virtually no stretch at all I find that a good length of nylon as a leader just gives that little bit of cushioning when you're playing the fish. Now the, uh, the subject that comes up most often, the terminal tackle for gilt head bream what I've got, I've got a running ledger and just a, a small lead link there, running free on the on the leader, the 15 pound nylon leader, and then a very small, this is just a little five mil bead and a small sw swivel, and the bead uh, is just there to protect the knot on the trace, and then the trace itself. 
is about two and a half to three feet of fluorocarbon. This is 15 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, you can go lighter if you wish, but that's what I, li I like to use, 15 pound fluorocarbon. And rather than just the, uh, if it was a straight running ledger, rather than just the one hook at the end, what I've got, I've got a short snood coming off the main trace uh, with another hook. So basically you could call it a two down rig. And what I, the reason I like that is one, the added scent uh, with the two baits out there, the added, added scent that it puts in into the water. And also when I'm go ahead bring fishing, I like to just fish with one rod rather than two rods because I've tried fishing two rods before and um, what I found happens that happened uh, they're such a hard fighting fish um, what happens they can they run all over the place and I'm ha I've had them pick up the line of the other rod so um, I prefer now and you're getting all, all sorts of a mess so I prefer now just to fish the one rod and just have two two baits out on the one rod now the thing that I find is most important uh, when it comes to the trace for gilt hair bream and that's the hook and what you need is a, a very very strong very very sharp hook. The mouth of the gilt hair bream is quite unusual inside the mouth. They've got rows of teeth that go back about an inch and they're similar to human teeth and they really are as hard as concrete and sometimes it's difficult to find find a spot to get a hook hold in the mouth so and also because they're such a hard fighting fish you need a very very strong very very sharp hook this particular these particular hooks I use are Camasan B940s S um, the S stands for short shank but basically what they are they're an Aberdeen short shank hook chemically sharpened they are very, very sharp and they are very, very strong. And they're, they're a great hook for gilt head bream fishing. You can use, of course, other types of hooks. And what you want is a, a carp type hook. And the sizes are, can go range from size one to four, depending on what bait you're using. But uh, personally, I don't like going any bigger than size one. If anything, I would go smaller. But I find uh, size one suits the the baits that i tend to use when i'm gilt hair bream fishing which which is razor fish razor clam and if i use another bait i'll probably use lugworm right so that's the that's the terminal tackle um so we've got an eight foot 15 to 50 gram spinning rod a 4000 size spinning reel loaded with 20 pound braid twice the length of the rod uh, as a nylon leader 15 pound nylon leader then small lead link and as regards leads uh, what I find because you're fishing in creeks fishing in an estuary you very rarely need more than one ounce I mean what I carry tend to carry is uh, one one to two ounces but I generally get away always with fishing just a one ounce lead so straight running uh, running ledger um, you can even have just have the single hook just a one hook uh, running ledger or um, as I've got here, a two down hook, two down rig with the uh, doubling up with the two hooks. So that's the tackle. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna talk about the actual tactics uh, that I use when I'm out gilt head bream fishing in the estuaries in the creeks. Taking a look at the tactics employed for gilt head bream fishing. When I say tactics, it's certainly the tactics that uh, I use and I know others do do as well. I've created this drawing of a theoretical creek. So what we've got here we've got uh, this would be the main estuary and then coming off the main estuary is a creek or a river and this outer line here and here would represent the high water mark and the inner line here would represent the lowest low water mark. Therefore part of the creek would dry out at low water or maybe there would be just a trickle of water. Now it's said that uh, gilt head bream, when they move into these creeks, are always on the move when they're hunting, looking for food. So if you're going to fish the whole of the tide or most of the tide, uh, the tactics that I would employ would be to start maybe at the mouth of the creek, 
about an hour before low water, fished there and maybe fished the first, first hour of the flooding tide. Um, if you catch fish uh, or get bites, stay until the uh, bites stop. Um, or if you don't get anything, either way, then move on. And what I've created, I've created four positions, theoretical positions, A, B, C and D, uh, in, very, in different parts of the creek. So starting at A, um, on the last hour of the ebb, maybe the, the start of the flooding tide, see how you do there. If you catch fish, stay until you stop catching fish or stop getting bites. Or if you don't catch fish, move on to mark B and try there and adopt the same tactics. If you catch fish, uh, stay until you no longer get any bites. Or if you don't get anything on, on at B, um, move on as the tide floods in to mark C. Employ, uh, employ the same tactics there. And, and finally, finish up, if necessary, at mark D towards the top of the creek. Of course, if you're only fishing for a few hours of the tide, um, you can't maybe fish all of these marks. Maybe we just fish, if you're just going to fish a couple of hours around low water, stay at uh, point mark A, or maybe a few more hours, and then maybe move, move to mark B. So that's the theory that the bream, they move up the creek, they're constantly on the move, hunting for food, and the angler has to follow them if he wants to continue catching fish or continue being in a, a position to catch a fish, uh, that's, the, that's the tactic to employ. Now, of course, the great thing about having a kayak is that uh, you can, these, some of these creeks are very, very shallow, even, uh, even at high water. And, of course, with a kayak, uh, you, can, you can get into these where maybe boats uh, will, would be unable to. A kayak you can take into about a foot of water with no problem. So that's, it's a great advantage uh, using a kayak over a boat that uh, even a small boat may, may not be able to access some of these marks. Likewise, if you're fishing from the shore, you might be just stuck in one position. Uh, mainly because there's no access to other positions on the creek, therefore uh, again it it limits it limits your fishing capabilities of being able to move up the creek uh, theor in theory following the bream into the creek as the tide floods. So that's the tactics uh, that I employ. So uh, what I do now is actually. Uh, hopefully show you show you those tactics working for real and hopefully uh, catch catch a gilt head bream okay I'm out now I've dropped anchor at my first mark mark A um, that we talked about earlier it's about two hours before low water and I'm going to stay here and wait for the tide to turn and fish the early flood at this particular mark and see how I get on and uh, if necessary and when the tide starts flooding I'll move on to my second mark further up the creek. So one thing that's fantastic about uh, fishing these creeks um, it's so peaceful and the scenery there's a lot of wildlife to sit back and observe out in the trees there you know, herons and egrets and all sorts of wildlife Plus at times you can see the water absolutely um, bubbling with mullet. There's a lot of mullet uh, up here. I'm yet to fish, fish for them up here. I'm not sure whether they're thick-lipped or thin-lipped mullet. Pro probably a mix of both. But uh, one day I'll come up and have a go for the mullet here. I do fish for mullet, but usually in other places. The other thing is there's a lot of, there's a, a lot of um, small schooly bass here. And one uh, thing to note is whenever you go bream fishing in Cornwall, in the estuaries, it's more than likely you'll be fishing in a bass nursery area. Which means that except for a couple of months of the year, all bass are protected. Now, of course, when you're fishing for bream, uh, you're fishing with bait on the bottom. You're fishing with baits that bass like. So occasionally you, you, you can't help catching bass. But uh, they've got to be returned, even if, even if you catch a bass that's over the legal size limit of 37.5 centimetres, it has to be returned. 
Uh, one other thing to note, uh, if you do fish with inside a bass nursery area in Cornwall, um, is never to have sand eelers uh, on board. Um, it's not a bait you use for gilt head bream anyway, but uh, the point is all fishing with sand eels is banned within the nursery areas and that's probably because it's a good bait for bass. Um, I do know people, um, friends of mine, that uh, have come up here fishing on boats, um, small boats, and they have actually been uh, approached by the harbour master, uh, sorry, the, the, the fisheries. Um, they, patrol, they patrol up here just checking um, what you're doing, if you're fishing, you know, what you're doing, what you're fishing for, what baits you've got on board. Um, so not advisable to have sand or not that you need sand eel for gilt head bream. Okay, so um, one thing that's fantastic about today, I'm fishing for a Mediterranean, a predominantly Mediterranean fish, and it's a Mediterranean day. It's one of the warmest days we've had so far this year in Cornwall. Um, very still, although the wind is set to pick up later, but it's, it's very warm and it's a real pleasure to fish for a Mediterranean fish in, at the moment, a bit of Mediterranean weather. So that's fantastic. When I talked earlier about the tactics I use uh, in these creeks for gilt head bream fishing, I mentioned how the creek dries out at low water and because I'm, I'm still on the ebb tide at the moment and you can see across there how it's starting to dry. And it will dry a lot more than that. And at some, at some point there'll only be there'll only be a small channel and mostly dry land um, further up the creek and of course as I did say uh, mentioned earlier this means that uh, at times boats can't get up there but I can in the, in the kayak so fantastic advantage to be able to access these places just talk once again about the bait I'm using. Um, as I said uh, uh, earlier, I've got the two hook, the two down rig, and on the end hook I've got, uh, it's about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters of, of razor clam, razor fish, bound in shearing elastic. And on the other hook, I've got about the same size of lugworm. Now, at the moment, I'm only fishing about 10 feet of water and, it, and we're on the ebb tide. And later during the day, uh, when I go further further up the creek, um, I'm going to be fishing in even even shallower water. So what I do is you just cast the cast the bait away from the kayak a little bit, rather than just drop it straight down. I know a kayak is not quite the same as a boat; it's got more stealth. But even so, some, uh, later I might only be fishing in about f three or four feet of water or less. So, so all I do is just, I mean, it's not up tiding, it's just lobbing in out, out from the kayak, only about 30 or 40 yards to the side, and let out plenty of slack, and uh, a bit like up, up tiding, and that will that'll settle, settle in the, uh, in the flow, but it will keep it away from the kayak, and any noise that the kayak might make in the shallow water to put the fish off, or any noise that... Uh, I might might make uh, to put them off. So just keep keeping the bait, just lob it out 30 or 40 yards, and keep it uh, keep it away from the kayak. I'm into my first fish of the day, um, which is really pleasing, and it's thumping away really nicely here. And I wish you could feel it. It really is a thump. And it could of course be a bass, but let's hope it's a gilt. Yeah, there's one hell of a headbanger. I'm just hoping I've got a, a firm hook hold in that tough. He's coming up towards me now, that tough mouth of theirs.
just gonna... It... it is a guilt. It's a guilt, so that's fantastic. But I've got to be a bit careful here. Interesting to see which bait it uh, is caught on the razor clam. Tide here again pulling against me getting this fish in. Everybody looks well hooked and we've got him. Yeah, that's caught on the razor cliff, razor clam. Absolutely fantastic bait. And if you've seen my video uh, catching and, and using razor fish for sea bass and gilt head bream. Um, you'll see that I gather it myself. It really is a, a brilliant bait and un underrated. Uh, it's got a wonderful, wonderful, fantastic scent to it. Okay. We'll just deal with this fish and then in a moment we'll have a look at it. Okay, so there's the first gilt here, bream. Absolutely beautiful fish. And there on the head there you can see the the gilt, the gold patches. Stunning looking fish. Um, I just weighed this one, it's it's not a huge fish. It weighs two and a half pounds, but it's a nice it's a nice fish. Um, as you can see there they're very similar. Uh, got these <clears throat> um, really sharp spines on the back there, a bit like sea bass really. So you've got to be a little bit careful when you're handling and them. A lovely silver bar there, um, wonderful two-tone colours there in the belly. Delightful, delightful fish. Hopefully I can pick up one or two more. Coincidence uh, I should mention earlier about the patrol, the, the patrol the river, and uh, there it is, that's the fisheries patrol. I saw it go upriver earlier and it's on its way back there. Patrolling and, and what they'll mainly be looking for is illegal netting going on in the bass nursery areas. Looks like they're gonna <clears throat> they're gonna leave me alone. But uh, like I said they do on occasion pull up to boats and uh, while well, I said they're gonna leave me alone looks like they're heading my way now well that's fair enough yep looks like they're gonna come and check me out <laughs> well they did come the patrol did come and check me out um, they're nice guys and all they're doing really is checking that uh, you're, you're aware of the rules up in the bass nursery areas here that you can't take bass, bass need to be returned and uh, they give me information le leaflet because at, um, um, other people down at the office uh, they know me yet, they know me anyway that, uh, that I put these things, these rules out on the blog uh, size limits and uh, about bass nursery areas um, but it's a great thing uh, at least they, they're up here um, because it's, it, it's it's the time of the year where it is uh, the nursery area comes into force um, it's good to see them up there patrolling and um, I, it's no problem for me to uh, for them to come and check me out because uh, I'm not doing anything wrong um, you can fish you're allowed to fish up here off of a vessel within the bass nursery area there's no no rules against that but uh, the rule is the sea bass they're protected um, it doesn't matter like I said earlier it doesn't matter if you get a bass over the size limit I mean, it has to be returned and, it, and it's a good thing because 
I fish for bass a lot uh, in the autumn and there is absolutely no need whatsoever to come into a nursery area and catch bass. You can catch bass out on the main coast, you can catch bass uh, outside the nursery areas. Um, it's really, really not necessary. As regards, uh, the, the rule only applies to vessels um, and the kayak, of course, comes under that category as a, as a, a vessel. Um, it doesn't apply to shore fishermen. They can f uh, take bass as long as they're over the legal size limit from a nursery area. However, it is discouraged, um, even for shore fishermen, if they catch a bass within the nursery area, to return it. And, like I said, I mean, I fish for them, um, don't have any problems catching bass outside nursery areas. So there's, there's no need, need to um, fish for them, in my opinion, within a nursery area. Area. However, of course, the gilt hair bream, um, that's another matter, and that's obviously what I'm here for today. Another interesting thing, the, uh, the fishing patrol there gave me one of these, and basically it's the, the uh, Cornwall IFCA, Inshore Fishes Conservation Authority's uh, size limit. I mean, I'm, aware, I'm aware of the size limits anyway, but uh, it's really, really good that they're handing these out, particularly if there's um, tourists, holiday makers fishing in Cornwall. Uh, we've got bass there, 37 and a half, cod, 35. But the other interesting fact is they've got black bream on, on here, but there's no actual size limit uh, in Cornwall for gilt head bream. It's not listed. And uh, hopefully, maybe one day, they, uh, they will put a size limit, on, include gilt head bream, a size limit for gilt head bream, but at the moment, at the moment there isn't, there's most fish on there. But still, that's, this is quite useful and really good of these guys to give this out, particularly for those that, as I say, that come here and uh, maybe for their two weeks holiday each year and fish and not really aware, aware of the local size limits because size limits obviously vary in different parts of the country. I, I mean, for example, bass, I believe, I may be wrong, that there are certain parts of the country where bass um, is still only 36 centimetres. It's been 37 and a half in Cornwall for, for quite, for some time now. And I also believe, I may be wrong, that Cornwall is one of the, the highest size limits. So there you are, that's what they gave me. Um, Fishing Patrol from the Inshore Fishing Conservation Authority. The other leaflet the uh, Fishing Patrol handed me, and again this is this is really really good for uh, people that don't have the knowledge of these areas, and it is um, information about the Bass Nursery area, and it covers the, the River Foy, the Fowl Estuary, the Percule River and the Helford River, and it's closed from the 1st of May to the 31st of December. So that's when um, all bass are protected. And it says down the bottom there, these are the rules during the close period, no bass to be retained when fishing from a boat, no sand deals to be used as bait when fishing from a boat. Um, and of course boat, that also means kayak. Any bass caught from a boat is to be immediately returned to the sea. So brilliant, brilliant that these guys are doing this job and handing this out. Um, to people that may, may not uh, already have that knowledge. Time for me to call it a day now and head on in. I've tried a couple of the other marks with no success, so just the one fish today. However, really, really pleasing to catch one whenever I go gilt head bream fishing. Um, I'm always grateful to at least get one fish. They are a, a great fish to fish for and a, and a great fish to catch, so I'm pleased. For those of you that um, have never caught gilt head bream before or fished for them. I hope you found that little insight to gilt head bream fishing in Cornwall useful for your own fishing and that there was a few um, tips and pointers for you. And many, many thanks for watching.